Hello everyone, welcome. Hello everyone, welcome to Hill Studios back again. I just kept this window so so small. Yeah, that's the plan. Okay, let's get started. So this video is about Vivox. One of the reasons why I really want to do on Vivox is like I did a project where I need to use Vivox and uh, I use 3D positional chart where like in 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 game if you are close with a person then you will uh, talk using voice chat communications provided by Vivox. If you are far away, you are not going to talk and that's what I'm going to discuss and I think it is easy to set up and I'm going to show you the basic setup so that you guys can figure it out like how to extend the functionality and uh, and also I think you sh you should have some basic C++ knowledge in order to get it get this thing set up and running and Vivox is free up to 5000 concurrent users at any point of time. So it is better to check it out and just try it out. So one firstly what you need to do is you just need to go to uh, Vivox portal developer.vivox.com. I'll try to I'll try to log in and uh, we will see if I can get in. Then I'll let you know. Also, before that, let me tell you what I need to do. What you need to do is okay. I'm going to come in some hours. Try like in chronological order. I'm going to start in chronological order so you guys can follow it up. So. Also for this project, uh, Vivox will provide a plugin. So make sure you have uh, Visual Studio Community Edition. I think it's better if you have Community Edition then because you need to build the scripts in order to do that. And once you once you log in into the website, you can create and you need to create an organization. And once you created an organization, it will take around like one day to verify and just let it verify it. And after verifying, uh, it will ask you to create an application and create an application in that it will load my default application and once you go to create an application type it properly don't try to uh, type some random stuff like if you're using unreal engine i'm going to explain unreal engine so type unreal engine use what your platforms that you're using and create a new application and based on the platforms that you selected you're going to get a list of downloads that you need to download for setting it up so make sure you did this one. you did that one properly you can see the project name is oracle Ethereum. like this is the that is what my client told me to add so that's why i added it and once you once you go into this application you're going to get some credentials like secret whatever and uh, and once you get those then just a minute guys it's still loading in and once you get get it you need to download two stuff firstly first thing is uh, okay first thing is Vivox plugin, Vivox Unreal Engine plugin, and second one is Vivox uh, Shooter Sample. Like what they did is they wrote entire scripts for you, so you just need to drag and drop those scripts. Initially, I thought it is something which is completely terrible, but it is. Then it is kind of good enough. Okay, let us see. So you logged in. This is your name, and this is sandbox pro sandbox for If you're testing it out, not a problem at all. And uh, we got some users here. This is where I'm testing it out and uh, let us go down one minute okay view the full library click on view the full library i think i downloaded it so it's not showing many stuff to be honest okay and once you go there uh, it's going to ask you to download uh, you have to download two stuff first one is the unreal engine plugin the vox code plugin and next one is uh, unreal engine sample project so let us see go to oracle Ethereum. Okay, whatever project is in create a folder name plugins, go there and uh, drag and drop the Vivox code UE4 plugin. This folder, you should drop this folder, not any other folder. How do you know? Like go to this folder and you will find dot u plugin, right? Just uh, drag and drop this parent folder and drag it up. I think it is going to solve most of the problems. So yeah, like drag a folder whose immediate child contains dot u plugin. Got it? And drop here. This is this will add this plugin. And once you added the plugin to your project, what you need to do is right click and generate Visual Studio project files, which I'm not going to do right now. And uh, also now what you need to do is uh, I think go to Oracle at the build.cs and in the public depend in the private dependency modules use Vivox Core. I think this is pretty much basic, right? Like if you're trying to use and use online subsystem, I just did it for a safe site. You can do whatever you want. So 
so you downloaded the plugin and you added it to your project cool enough now what you need to do so okay it is ask me platform shit okay windows okay you have unreal engine shooter game source pre-built you don't need pre-built you need source so download the source it will be around 1 gb and once you downloaded it now uh, once you downloaded it uh, go to that particular source here is shooter game and uh, you have public and once you go to public you will have private private contains i think dot h files i think so then you will find a folder named as vivox this is what you're going to find okay so yeah public contains dot h and private contains dot cvb so what you need to do is you need to down for basic setup what i'm saying right now is for basic setup and it's also for current production like for testing i'm not recommending is for production got it okay so first thing is game instance just copy this entire script and remove this one and copy this entire thing and it's going to work it out and copy vivox game instance dot h and uh, give box game instance dot cpp as well okay now go to your vivox game instance and copy it and remove it wherever you are getting errors regarding to shooter game instance and do you do the fear free for all okay i think don't okay first of all do the game instance got it guys do the game instance then do vivox token.h and vivox token.cpp how i recommend to do it is like uh, go to your unreal engine editor go to c++ class and uh, right click and create new c++ class and and do whatever it is like uh, this one game instance is game instance right they create a game game instance class and copy the entry code over there that's what i'll recommend vivox token vivox tracer simple scripts i think they are an actor script so do something like that and uh, what i did over here is like let us see i have a game instance which i told you and uh, i added two scripts which is a vivox vivox tracer and uh, here you can see it vivox token and vivox tracer they are not actors they are just simple c++ classes that's the reason why they are not available in this editor and then once you do this stuff uh, you also have a base c++ base character i don't know why this is for so copy the game instance copy the game instance over copy the Vivo player controller Okay, Vivox token, Vivox tracer, and then player controller. Player controller is also extremely important, guys. So copy the player controller, this one, Vivox player controller, and copy CPP and dot H, and remove the header files which are resolving, like giving some errors, like shooter game, something like that. Now the setup is done. Now what you need to do is go to your project which you have. Uh, this is new project, right? You can just see in this Vivox game instance dot H. One thing I have to tell you guys is like you're going to get some errors because some modules are not available. I think uh, I don't know where we are getting that error. Wait, I'm going to go to build.cs. I think you might be getting that error, but you you might be getting some errors regarding some outdated uh, syntax kind of stuff. But search in internet, you will find to find the answer. If you're not able to find the answer, then post in comment section. I will try to help you. Then once you created a game instance. Here is your game instance right which you copied there's nothing to change to be honest but since i'm mostly comfortable in blueprints because my computer is not that fast so i mostly do blueprints so what i did is i converted some functions to blueprint callable i'm going to show that one as well not a problem at all so how this how this entire vivox thing works is like initially whenever you're loading the game instance will have a constructor uh wait where is the game instance game instance dot cpb here it is so this game instance will have a constructor which is going to initialize the module here it is you can see vivox voice client it is loading that module once you load that module what we need to do is like uh, yeah so once you once you load that module in start game instance you might find there is there will be a line in 144 login got it and what i did is initially i commented it out because i'm going to call it from blueprints okay I'm, i don't want to call it from this something like that so how this is helpful right 
So if, if you're using Amazon Web Services or Playfab or Steam, whatever, you're going to have a unique Steam player ID. You can send it directly. What he's doing here is like he's going to use some pre uh, preferred unique net ID, something like that. But uh, I think player ID is something which is much more better because it is unique for each and every player. So comment it out. And I think that's it, to be honest. Yeah, that's it. So let us go to our and just do add all of the scripts. Works game instance, player controller, token tracer. And you need to figure out some stuff, guys, like basic errors, like convention, something like that. Okay, now what you need to do. Now it is pretty simple. So go to, uh, wait, we're going to go to the character, okay, wait. So now what you need to do is, uh, now what you need to do is you need to create a blueprint child classes of those classes, got it? So initially you have this um, game instance, right? So let me take you to the maps and island map. This is where the voice chart is being implemented. Initially, initially there are a lot of errors. So I figured it out using uh, Visual Studio breakpoints. My God, it's going to. Initially, initially I it took me like I took a lot of time to figure it out. Like because there are so many null errors and C plus plus is not null friendly. It just breaks out. So, okay, here you got the landscape, something like that. Let's go to the world settings and then you can see island game mode. Island game mode is game mode, which has a parent class works game mode, guys. And uh, if you, okay, you need to go to edit project settings. You need to set that game instance in so that it will load the works first. So let us see. So, We're going to search for game instance. Here is a game instance, Oracle game instance. Oracle game instance is also a, a child class of Vivox game instance, guys. And then you have Island Play con Player Controller, which is a child class of this thing. Okay, fine. Now what we need to do? It's pretty simple. Like uh, what you need to do is what I'm doing currently is like, let us go to, no, not main menu. Let us go to the main menu UI. And here it, what, what I'm doing here is I'm going to have a start button. And when I press that start button, what happens is that we're going to log in. So when I press the start button, I'm going to cache the game instance and then I'm going checking, I'm going to call this load module function again, just on a safe side. Okay. It is not necessary. So what I'm telling is a quick warning guys, it will not work in standalone mode, but if you, it will work in editor and it will work in package game. Okay. I figured it out. I wasted a day after that I packaged it and it is working fine in package version. So cool. And once you load the model module, just use some delay or don't do this thing at all. It is completely fine. It will do it on in game instance. Today. And after that, you need to call login function, which is again getting calling from this game instance. Okay. Initially, these things will not get called from blueprints. What you need to do is go to Vivox game instance H and you just need to have a U function macro and adding blueprint callable. What it is? You need to add that one. You need to add that one. You need to add that one, guys. And I think the voice is breaking a lot because of lag. Okay, now you got the login stuff, right? Once you logged in, Okay, I'm going to explain it again just for you. So you just need to add blueprint callable macro function on top of login. Got it. Once you did that, you can call it from blueprints. And once you logged in, you just need to open command, something like that. You're going to join a dedicated server. So what happens is that when you log in, you're going to log into the Vivox server. You're not going to log in into a voice chart. You're not going to log in into a voice chart. You're just going to log into the server, which will help you to make further calls. So what are the further calls? It's pretty simple. So what I'm going to do is let me go to my character first. Blueprint, blueprint. So it'll be one super class and everything is childless. So this is a super class, third person character. Let's go to that and I'm going to explain to you guys. So when I'm beginning the play, I'm going to check if it is local player control or not. If it is local player, then what I'm going to do is I'm I'm calling this function in client to join voice. 
which is game mode FFA. You have to write it FFA. So what happens is that initially in the code, if it is FFA, it will enable 3D chart. If it is some other mode, it's going to enable team chart. I hope you guys are getting it. So enable FFA, which is like free for all and online session ID, write something. You can figure it out afterwards, like what you need to do. But this one is like a channel ID. So how Vivox works is like there will be a channel and people who are connected to the channel can talk to each other. That's how it works. There will be a channel and people who are connected to the channel will talk. So channel should be unique. And also a player with same player ID, two players with same player ID cannot join into channel. If there is a guy with player ID 1 in a channel and if your other guy also came with player ID 1, this guy is going to get exited. Got it? So unique player ID and unique channel ID is extremely important. Like in PUBG Mobile, when there will be team player, for that entire team, there will be one unique channel. I hope you guys are getting it. Fortnite uses Vivox and PUBG, PUBG also uses Vivox. So choose a game mode and you also have an online session ID. Just keep some random number and team number, number of mem num team number, I, I made it five. You can have it 10, 20, whatever. I think maximum is 32, I think so. I don't know, we have to figure it out. So, and after that, try and join voice. Once you joined it, I hope it, it is going to be joined. You don't need to worry at all. Now what you need to do is, uh, you need to create a voice bind, which is voice input. When I press V, it, this function is going to execute it. And when I press it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my controller and I'm going to call this function, push to talk area channel press. It is also in the Vivox player controller. You also need to keep it blueprint callable. Okay, and once released, push to talk area channel released. That's it. That's how it works. Just need to load the module. Loading will be done in C++. You can also run it blueprint. And then you need to log in. And then you need to join a channel. Login should be done in the main menu. And once you join the actual level, then you need to jo join a channel. The channel property can be edit. Uh, okay, wait. One thing I can say is like if you're if you're trying to use if you're trying to do it in a dedicated game server, then you can have the IP address because IP address is Hmm. IP address might not be unique if you are running multiple game instances on a single instance. Maybe IP address plus port number, right? If you if you are doing it on dedicated server, what you can do is like you can take IP address and you can take port and you can mix them all, remove dots, whatever you can do, and keep that one as a channel. It's going to work it out. It's going to create a unique ID for you. Okay. And once it is done, uh, you need to join the channel. And after joining the channel. You need to push to talk here to channel press and push it to talk in channel released. And that's it. That's how it works. Uh, wait, I, do, I can show you how it works in the output log. If you guys want it, I can show it to you. Wait, uh, okay, fine. I'll show it to you. I think I can do it. Wait a minute. So, okay, I think I can do it here. Okay, I think I have to log in first. Okay guys, I think it, it will definitely work. You don't need to worry at all. And if there are any doubts, just point, ping me or message me. And that's it. Thank you.